Now, Rab, what do we got for everybody? I'll hold them out here. We got, like I said, we got 13 flies here. Why don't I start right up here, and we can go through them all, and you can describe them to our viewers, and I'll try not to maul them too much as I hold them out here for you. Okay, now our first fly is a marillage. Now, this is a hair wing adapt adaptation of, mm -hmm. of a classic pattern. Yep. And uh, basically, the body and the throat and, and the butt and the tag and tail are all the same, except for mm -hmm. the wing, which is, of course, hair. Whoops. She tipped over there a little bit. It's going to fly away on you, boy. Okay. And uh, I like to use the dark hair on, on the marillage as opposed to the silver gray. I like to use a light hair. Mm -hmm. So always something a little different. That's different. And you can see the little black black uh, band in the, in the ribbon. Just... Uh, it's just a little highlight, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's a good fly in uh, dull weather, early in the morning, late in the evening. Great. Okay. And the next one now. We got a case of the shakes here. Now I'm gonna have to cut out on the caffeine here. Yeah. Did I hold this one up any better? Okay. That's a green button butterfly. Mm -hmm. And the butterflies, uh, the actual pattern was developed in 1959, I do think, by a, a Mr. Ingalls from Florida. And uh, there was no butt on, on, the, on the pattern that he came up for, and it was called the Ingalls Butterfly, but uh, the addition of a, of a green fluorescent butt has been very, uh, very good in the past few, oh, actually a couple of decades. See there. From that view, if I don't drop it, man, I'm yeah. having all kinds of troubles here. Let's try that again. And it's, it's a split quite, wing. Yeah, it's, it's got a split, a split lay, a wing, mm -hmm. and it's quite like a coachman. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it can be fished dry, wet, pumping, retrieve, whatever. But it's a good fly, excellent fly. Okay. And it's fish, fish tart over in New Brunswick. And this next one, I have used one that is quite similar to this, yeah. but uh, it's a pretty traditional looking pattern, but uh, deadly looking fly too. Yeah, that's a black bear red butt. Our guests may have, uh, viewers may have remembered us doing a black bear green butt. Mm -hmm. And this is just a similar fly, but it has a red butt on it, fluorescent red stretch yarn for a butt. And it's an excellent fly in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. And it's not used much here. People sort of favor the green butt, yeah. the fluorescent green butt. But this pattern is just as good, I think. OK. And the next one coming up now, oh, getting into a nice, uh, actually, that's sort of a different blue. Uh, yeah. That one, obviously, you've dyed it yourself. But there's a slightly different looking color than what we usually yeah. see in a blue charm or something. Yeah, it's called a Laxa blue. Mm -hmm. And it's an Icelandic pattern. Any pattern with blue is supposed to be hot in Iceland. And actually, it worked on the Humber pretty good this year, too, because uh, I was guiding a couple of Ita Italians, and uh, actually four Italians, myself and Ken Huckster, and, and Ken's, uh, one of Ken's guests hauled out a lax of blue and quickly nailed a couple of salmon. Wow. And Might uh, also be a case where it's not commonly used, so it was a different yeah, looking yeah, fly yeah, than yeah, what the salmon yeah. had been. It's a beautiful, rich, rich looking pattern. Nice. Okay. It is. I think it would work well at Big Falls, too. Uh-huh. And out west. Robinson, Southwest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have a green Casa Boom streamer, but uh, it has a fluorescent red butt and a red head, and not now most of the most of the Casa Booms over in uh, over in the mainland use red in the head. Mm -hmm. Around here we usually use black, but this has been been a real killing pattern in the past ten years. Okay. Nice. All right. It's a beautiful fly. And the last one in this series, on the top here anyways, is this one here. It is my own hair hackle black cosmo boom. Instead of hackle, a feather hackle tied around it as a collar, I use deer hair spun in two small bunches. Mm -hmm. And I've also added a fluorescent orange butt. Uh, this fly has taken my two, two biggest fish in the past two years, one about 28 and one about 25 pounds. And this hook, too, you get a uh, much larger gap on it. Is that, uh, I'll use a down eye hook, and it's called is a 3906B, mm -hmm. which is a 1X line uh, wet fly hook. And it's a strong hook, and I'll use it specifically. Although I must say, I, I've taken fish now in, in the past two years at Lowman, Upper and Lower Humber, mm -hmm. Southwest Robinsons, Harry's, all over. It's a good pattern. Okay. This is the order, and I will be presenting them in this, yes. this season. So the next one. In the series, okay. Is this, this is another mainland pattern, and that one is called the silver red. And it's a beautiful fly, it, you know. It's a it's just a color scheme is just perfect. It's a pale tone fly, but that little flash of red on the head is. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the uniqueness of this fly, like I've, <coughs> I've taught and used silver rats, and our next fly coming for Rusty Rat, but I've used uh, let me see, gray squirrel in the wing, mm -hmm. and, and I haven't really found it too effective. But I think 
the, the secret to that fly is this gray fox skirt here is in the wing. Uh, is very lively yeah. in the water. Yes, excellent fly. And the next one after that one will be, now uh, this is a different, now uh, you may not see this right off the bat when I hold it up here, but uh, it's a double hook. Okay. What, uh, what's this one all about, Rob? Uh, that is called a rusty rat, and it's one of the three or four famous rat patterns. Uh, the silver and rusty rat account for more big fish each year, I think, than any other wet fly. Mm -hmm. Heavily used in Quebec and uh, heavily used as a double. It's, uh, it's sort of a jock Scottish looking fly with a, a segmented body and has a red head, grizzly hackle collar, and again, the gray fox uh, guard hairs, and that nice, nice tail material is called peacock sword, not hurl, which we usually use here. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a pattern that's not used heavily here, but I think if people fished it more, they do, do just really well, you know? Okay. Now, <coughs> are there, uh, there's no regulations about using a double hook as nope. around the salmon rivers? Nope. I mean, somebody Singles or doubles, no trebles. No trebles. No. So you don't have to worry about being out on a river and somebody no. come along saying, what are you doing with a double hook? Obviously, if you if it's a hook and release only, you would have to. Well, if the hook I, I would imagine if it was a, a hook and release, you're just as well fishing with a single. Yeah. What's the advantage of a double hook? Is it just if you get two hooks in, the theory is that uh, you got you better chance. You know, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I like doubles in smaller sizes. Actually, like mm -hmm. I think doubles really have their place in eight, tens, and twelves. Okay. Now the next fly is uh, a hair hackle version of a gold. Casa boom and, and a rat. You can see elements of the rat and the casa boom in there. Mm -hmm. I've got yellow as a, as a collar, and any, any fly in Newfoundland that has a collar of yellow hackle is usually called a casa boom. And I've, I've used my hair hackle style on it, and I've taken elements of, a, of, of the rat and the casa boom series, so we're, we're, we're going to name that fly a little later on. Okay. Sort of like in the a trade in the NHL, a, a, a fly to be named later. Yeah. Okay. Now, here we go. We're up into a nice uh, wing pattern you get on the go here. Tell us about this little fly. Okay, now we've got a reduced version of the Green Highlander. It's a feather wing fly. Now, all our flies at one time were feather wings. Mm -hmm. And actually, Newfoundlanders were the last to uh, give up on feather wings in a sense. They're hard to get, hard to tie. You know, with the authentic, authentic materials are very, almost, uh, you know, impossible to get now. And if you do it, they're exorbitant costs. Yeah. You know, it sort of prohibits getting them. And Amazing. feather wings do have their place. Yeah. And this oh, is a beautiful, beautiful flies. What kind of flies is this again? Green Highlander. Okay. So this is the Green Highlander. And my hand is starting to cramp up here, but we'll only go. got a couple left here. This little one here now. It's called a surface stone fly. Now, Lee Wolf devised this fly back in the late 50s mm -hmm. at Portland Creek. I think it was his experimentation ground. And it's, 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 it's an effective secret pattern that not many people have. Now, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is this yellow ball, like okay. in the top. Okay. On the original fly, it was a plastic body, mm -hmm. and that ball you would see there was just plastic, and, and the solvent cement was used to embed the materials into it. There was no tying thread. Okay. Right now, I've got a dressmaker's pin in that, and I'm using uh, 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 raffia, synthetic raffia for the body. So it doesn't soak up body as the plastic body doesn't, and uh, it keeps it pretty, pretty close to the original surface stone fly. So we've got, you've got a dressmaker's pin that runs right along length, the length, shaft yeah, of, the of the shank of the hook. Oh. And I'll tell you right now. Is that uh, the natural color of the top of the pin? Uh, well, actually, that was white, but I painted it yellow. But actually, most times, it, it, it is yellow, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a clean-up fly. It's a fly that I wouldn't be able to on a, without on a river. Yeah. I've taken fish all, on every river that I've fished in Newfoundland. Is that, is that a fly that, uh, if, say, you're fishing away, you don't seem to be rising or anything, that's a nice fly that's different to throw out there for, or are there more ideal conditions for it? Uh, I like that. I, I usually try that last last fly I usually fish out. Okay. Like if I use five or six or eight, ten uh, different dry flies and things aren't happening and whatever, or somebody's worked the pool pretty hard and you know they're fish there, mm -hmm. I'd slip on that fly. You're just clipping it up fly. Okay, here's a second last one of the series. Okay, the next fly is a hair wing Adams. Mm -hmm. okay. And Adams is a trout fly. And uh, the original Adams had uh, grizzly and brown for the tail, grizzly and brown hackle for the tail, mm -hmm. uh, gray, uh, let me see, muskrat body, uh, grizzly hackle taps, uh, tips for the wing, and grizzly and brown for the, for the uh, hackle. I've replaced the tail with uh, brown deer hair, or natural brown deer hair, and the wings with gray fox guard hair, so it keeps in the coloration of a, 
-hmm. of the trout atoms, but uh, it's a more durable fly, excellent for salmon. Okay. Gray wolf is good, and this one will be a little bit more visible. Okay, and then the last one now is a, <coughs> a big bug pattern. This is another one of yours? Yes, it is. It's a green bomber. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, back in the late 70s, I, I did up a wolf in this same style. Instead of a clipped body, uh, hair body, I uh, used seals for in. I hooked my biggest fish I ever hooked down at Longman River. It was well over 20 pounds. We didn't get it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And, They're uh, always over 20 uh, pounds. It was, a, it, it. it was a brute. It was yeah. a brute. And uh, this particular fly here I devised two years ago, mm -hmm. and last year it worked out to be my, my most effective fly. And one of my guests uh, got a 20 pounder up on the lower humber on it. Excellent. Plus, I hooked fish up to Harry's Long Real Southwest. Bright fly. It's a beauty. It's a yeah. beauty. You, so you can't miss it. What kind of day? Any conditions? Yeah. Yeah. Fast water? Well, bugs are usually fish in medium rat water. Okay. But I mean, fast or, uh, or slow. It depends on the, the, the cer certain laws of the fish, you mm -hmm. know? Certainly no problem being able to follow your fly anyway. No. Oh, geez. Yeah. If you can't see that one, you should call it a day and go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, there you see, that's the. Uh, the, the whole, all 13 flies that will be time for you this season. Like we said earlier, we've uh, got a nice fishing show planned, oh, so yeah. hopefully that'll all come together at the, at the, with the uh, weather, if the weather cooperates in that. And uh, just a reminder, if, you're, if you haven't uh, read the, the new uh, rulings coming down now from, from DFO, the, the season is shorter this year, and the bag limit is reduced. It's uh, 12 fish plus one. Or actually, it's a 12, 12 trout a day, yeah. or five pounds plus one. Plus one. And that's plenty for anybody. Yeah. Anybody that starts grumbling about that, yeah. pack it in. Yeah. Don't trout fish. <laughs> there you go. Alrighty. Well, here's you ready to go. So let's go with our first fly for the day, uh, for the season, and uh, the only fly we'll do today. Yeah. <laughs> here's what you're going to need to tie it. Okay. The hook is a number four low water. The thread is white 3-0 monocord, black 6-0 monocord. The tag is fine oval silver tinsel. The tail is golden pheasant crest. The butt, black wool. The rib, oval silver tinsel. The body is flat silver tinsel and black floss in the middle third. The throat is guinea hackle. The wing is black squirrel tail. And the head is black. And that's what you need to tie the Meyer Lodge. Okay, here go we go. Go to it there. Okay, what we usually do again is we just tie back on the, on the loop mm -hmm. for three or four turns, and then when we get over, just clip off the excess. And what we'll do is we'll tie our tag material in at the end of the return loop. Again, the reason why we do this is to fill in the return. So you get a nice smooth joint, right? Okay, and we're going to lacquer the back of the shank. And that will flow down around the side, so we'll get a nice seal, a nice bond with our thread and shank. People still come up to me and say, I can't believe he uses that much cement and cement. lacquers. Yeah. yeah. Makes a difference. Yeah. Any fly worth doing is worth doing well, right? Did you hear that one before? I've heard a lot, but yeah. uh, I haven't heard that one before. Okay. Okay, we're going back to the tip, or excuse me, the point, and we're going to reverse the flow of our thread. We're going to head back up towards the eye for eight or ten turns. Now we're going to put some lacquer right on that spot where the tinsel portion of the tag is going to occupy. And go up one more, a couple more turns. Okay. Because this actually is going to be the whole, t whole tag, so it's going to be a little wider. I think seven turns of fine oval. That's an extra fine, and that's fine oval silver tinsel. Two turns to tie off. Now, our next material is golden pheasant crest for tail. Uh huh. Where did you acquire this piece of material? <laughs> it came off a golden pheasant right off his right off his head. That's his neck area, right right from here, right here. Uh huh. Just like your rug there. <laughs> Just call me Ted Danson. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, now our tail is going to go on, <clears throat> and this is a technique that our viewers are going to have to follow. Uh, uh, we'll do that a little bit more in depth this year. Some little techniques will just make them fall a little, little harder. Make them fall. Make them <laughs> yeah. Go over to their homes or something. <laughs> okay, we'll lay the Big tail. Yeah. Now you follow this. Lay the tail right on top, 
and it's not to go outside the bend of the hook. And we'll go up, form a loop, pinch the loop, and then pull up on your thread, and that, that forces the loop right straight down on the material. Okay, that keeps that's the a technique you've used before. Yeah, and that keeps the tail material right on top of the hook. Mm -hmm. Again, and loop. we pull up, and we make one extra turn. Mm. So we actually got three turns right on top of that material. It's locked right in, and it should be right straight behind the... Butter. Perfect. Straight right on. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull that rib, I'm actually that tag material over to one side here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pinch off some loose fibers of wool, and we're going to dub that directly onto the uh, thread now. Uh, You're not using any? Ostrich roll, or any dubbing wool, or whatever. A actually, uh, ostrich roll. You're not glue yeah. or nothing, yeah. no? You're just going to? Nope, just right onto the right thread. On. Now the reason why, I'll tell you now. Okay, now firstly, uh, ostrich hurl was used in the butt of most salmon flies, but it's awful fragile. So half of fragile. Huh? Half of them, I think. Half of. So what we do is we just dub on some wool onto your thread, and what happens is you can slide that up and down or whatever like that. Now mm -hmm. that's that's you know that'll stay on that thread. Okay, I believe it. So you don't have to glue it or. To glue or not to glue. That is the question. Okay, now make it so that it's an oval and outline. And we've sort of achieved that, I think. Thank you for including me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've achieved it. Yes, okay. I've done a fantastic job of watching him achieve it. Okay, now, our next material are yes. ribs. So, oval silver tinsel. In about, it's between a medium and a, uh, a small. Hmm. It's a nice tinsel. This is a larger tin. I'll tie that on the far side of the hook. Wrap it in with one turn. Pull it down so it's at about mm -hmm. uh, six o'clock. Do you need that much excess, sir? Yeah, no, I don't need that much excess. I just <laughs> see you now. Pardon me. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so we've got all the material caught in that we need for the ribs and our tag and butters in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tie in our silver tensile, flat silver tensile for the body. And what we'll do is we'll just wrap so it up gold around. on one side and silver on the other side. Yep. So you want the silver side down. Towards you. The yes. gold, when you make that first wrap, so you see it'll so flip her over. Yeah, that's right. Now I like to keep the materials in the same plane that they were tied off on. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a nice smooth body. Now you can't have a nice smooth body if you don't have a good smooth underbody. None of your jokes, John. And we stepped it out to let rip, too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to twist, take this twist out of the flask by spinning it and flattening it between mm -hmm. thumb and forefinger, and I'll come right up to the end of the return loop, and I'll just clip out some of the excess materials right flush parallel with the, the return loop. Okay. And I'll take this piece over here. And I'll be careful not to clip the loop itself. Yep. Now, I, I usually use a flask underbody on my, my tinsel body flies, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go down for about two-thirds of the body mm -hmm. with the thread. About two-thirds, and I'm going to work back up again. Now what that does is I'm building a little taper. Now I, could, I could achieve that by doing flasks, and I could have done that pretty easily, but uh, our viewers should realize that uh, this particular hook here is a low-water style hook and, and a shank. Uh, the wire of low water hooks is very, very small, so mm -hmm. okay. it's going to be skinny in a way, slim. This feature here on your vice is a nice feature. It's a material clip. Uh, it's built in. Yeah. So. It's not on mine. No, no. Didn't, didn't you get one of those? No, sir. <laughs> I zipped you. <laughs> <laughs> I bought, I've ordered my vice for me. Yeah, you okay. left that part off. Here we go. No, but that's, I can see that quite handy for, for cooking material oh, to keep them out of the way for you. Yeah. And you wrap that material edge to edge. Now, we're working pretty quickly because we're getting fairly late into the show. Mm -hmm. But trust me, viewers, you're, you're speed that's demon, edge to edge. I taught it off at three or four turns. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to put my, I'm going to whip off my white thread that I'll use to do the body. Okay. And we're going to be finished with that. Yep. Be gone.
Now, we said uh, we were going to do a black flux uh, center joint for the, uh, for the body. What we're going to do is we're just, we're just going to use the black tying thread. And we'll go down in nice tight turns, close tight turns. Why is that? Because we're going to form the third of the body, mm -hmm. the middle third, right? Instead of using flask, we can use tying thread. Now, I use 3 O is nice here. I'm using 6 though, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that there's no silver showing through. And again, one third of the body. Two layers is good enough. And then what you do there is you whip back. Right in the middle of the fly. Right in the middle of the fly. Whoa. It saves a lot of time instead of having to... Uh, this guy good or what? You know, just cut off materials and tie them back in again. We run out of time, so we did a little bit of a cooking show trick here. <laughs> Rob went ahead, he tied the ribs in. Standard, like he's done on all of his flies where he's used ribs, just the five standard wraps. Yep. And he tied the throat in. Again, same standard technique. So what have we got left to do, Rob? We're just going to tie in what? Inner squirrel tail. All right. Actually, what we're using is mango tail. Mango tail. Mango. From the island of Mango. Okay. Did you know that? It's one of the Hawaiian islands? No. Yeah. Mango Island. Okay. Three. Actually, that no, was that island. Three turns. I'm, I'm totally lying. Okay, three reps three to reps. secure it, and then we'll go towards the hook eye, and then back to the back of the head, Thump. down once more, back to the back of the head. Like an aerobic show. Yep, and we're slaying beautifully, and we'll whip off. Whip her off there, butter. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Excellent job. Speed technique. All <laughs> right, Ra. There you go. Like I said, we <coughs> Excuse me. hurried there a little bit just to get it in, but uh, that's it. The fly for this week, super job. Man, Thank can you ever tie fast?